Today I'm going to talk to you about the carbon footprint of artificial intelligence. Um, really, is carbon footprint of artificial intelligence something to be discussed about? Is there a carbon footprint of AI? Is it material? We're going to try and understand some of this today. But before we understand um, the details, let's try to understand what's the carbon footprint itself. What's a carbon footprint? Let me start by telling you a small story. Um, we all struggle to understand carbon footprint, so this is a story to try and put that in context. One morning, uh, on a Saturday morning, my eight-year-old daughter woke me up, and she said, Papa, I have become a very rich girl. And I asked her, hey, how? What happened? She said, my piggy bank is full. I can't put any more coins in it. I said, oh, great. So how much money do you have? She said, I have 52 pounds. Can I buy a house with this? I said, what? You can't buy a house with 52 pounds. Can I buy a car with this? I said, no, you can't buy a car with 52 pounds. So we agreed that you can buy maybe a dress, maybe you can buy some books, you can buy a nice pair of shoes, you can buy a few things. So she went back thinking, OK, so 52 pounds gives me only so much. I need to earn 52,000 pounds, 52 million pounds to buy some of those things. So she's gone back understanding how much is 52 pounds. When we talk about carbon footprint, if I say this pair of foot pair, footwear is 6.26 .6 kilograms of CO2, that's the footprint of my shoe, what, what does it mean to all of you? Probably means nothing. 6.26 .6 is just a number. So unless I put this in context, it's going to be very difficult to understand carbon footprint of anything, let alone carbon footprint of artificial intelligence. So we're going to try and understand this a bit better. This shoe that I'm wearing now, is a vegan shoe. It's got no plastic and it's got no leather. It's only made of corn and rubber and algae and few other such organic material. And its carbon footprint <coughs> is calculated with so many parts in it, right from the materials that are sourced to how they are distributed to the manufacturing plant, the manufacturing process itself, and then how it's disposed of. This shoe will be in the landfill for less than a year. Within a year, it will biodegrade. A normal shoe would take 30 years to biodegrade. This shoe has a carbon footprint of 6.56. A normal shoe has a carbon footprint of 60 to 110 uh, grams of CO2. So it's about a tenth of the carbon footprint of another shoe. So now you start, of, start to get a sense of what is carbon footprint in the context of a shoe. Just the footwear industry causes 1.4% of the global carbon emissions. So how much is the global carbon emissions? We'll see that in a, in a subsequent slide. The global world's carbon emissions is 35 billion tons. And just our footwear is 1.4% of that. We spend so much of our carbon budget just on good shoes. All right, another example to understand this better. We all exhale carbon dioxide. And the trees inhale the carbon dioxide. The trees exhale oxygen and we inhale oxygen. So we have a symbiotic relationship between plants and human beings. So this kind of CO2 emission that happens when we breathe, breathe in and breathe out daily is not pertaining to global warming. Most other industrial activity where we cause carbon emissions leads to global warming. And that's carbon footprint. This is not carbon footprint. But as a reference, our breathing exercise causes one kilogram of CO2 emission per day on average just as a reference number to understand carbon dioxide. But this is not contributing to any kind of global warming unless we cho chop off all the trees, uh, which I hope doesn't happen. So what causes carbon dioxide emissions? The cars that we run causes a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. If you run your car, on average, an average car, which is fossil fuel burnt, causes 200 grams of CO2 emissions for every kilometer that you drive. So if you drive five kilometers, it is one kilogram of CO2 emissions. If you drive 5,000 kilometers, it is a ton of CO2 emissions. And 5,000 kilometers is not uncommon for people to drive in a year. In the Western world, people drive 5,000 miles. Some people drive 10,000 miles a year. So we cause millions of tons, um, tons and tons of emissions just by driving car. Just to summarize, then, the global carbon emissions is 35 billion tons. The biggest shareholder of that is China, because most of it 
Most of our manufacturing happens in China. 33% of the global CO2 emissions in 2021 was China. The next was the US and then India. India's ab absolute carbon emissions are still quite low compared to China and, and the US. On a per capita basis, the American carbon emission is very, very high at 14, uh, at 14 tons, 14.86 tons. India's carbon emissions on a per capita basis is very, very small. Why am I giving you all these numbers? A, to understand the size of carbon footprint. B, to also start appreciating that India, with the kind of growth that we've all embarked upon, with the kind of development journey that we've all embarked upon, and the kind of digitization that the Indian economy is being powered by, this emissions from India is going to exponentially rise in the coming years. So with this, I'm going to try and switch now into digital carbon emissions and how AI has a role to play. What's our digital carbon footprint? Before we try to answer that, we need to understand that AI, artificial intelligence, is everywhere, everything that we do. You fire a search on your mobile phone, it's powered by an AI model in the background. You stream movies, it comes from an AI model. Any recommendation that comes to you for any kind of content, it is served by an AI model. All those AI models have been trained and taught over many, many years with lots of content. So that's a huge amount of carbon emissions just in training the artificial intelligence models and then to deliver it to you. Any email that we send is also going through a data center. It's got all kinds of uh, emissions because all of our data centers are powered by the grid. Most of them are powered by the grid. Some of them are powered by renewable energy. But most of our data centers where all this AI and email and streaming and digital is happening is all powered on the grid. And the significant part of the grid is still fossil fuel based. So as our digital footprint increases, our carbon footprint is increasing. How much is that? You can see the kind of numbers over here for just for email. You know, 25 years ago, it didn't matter. When I started my career, email was just starting to happen. At that time, we used to still send faxes. But now, there's no fax. We only send email. But in 25 years, the number of emails that we all send has exponentially increased. We cannot live without sending and receiving emails. That's our way of life now. We cannot live without sending and receiving messages. We cannot live without sending and uh, without doing um, payment transactions through digital means. So all of these have a huge digital footprint. And this is an indication of the kind of footprint. If you do a video call, which increased exponentially during the COVID phase, there is a carbon footprint of it. How much is that? It's a function of two or three variables. Who are you talking to? How far they are from you? The distance matters. How many people are on that video call? And what kind of content are you sharing? Are you sharing a video on the video call? Are you sharing just text? Are you just looking at each other? Are you speaking? Are you playing music? All of this contributes to the carbon footprint because all of this consumes energy in the data center. So the carbon footprint of a five hour video call varies between four kilograms and 215 kilograms of CO2 depending on all of these factors. As you can see, it's quite complex to calculate this. And it's so complex, it's very difficult to understand. So many people do not understand it, do not want to understand it. But the problem we have is this. Many of us, most of us, use the internet to beat what I call boredom. Just mindless streaming of content, just addressing our stress. Many times we uh, stream content when we have to fill gaps in the day, we don't know what to do. We're just standing in the lobby waiting for somebody, let's, let's stream, let's stream, let's stream. All of us do this. This has become a habit. This is a big social issue. It's causing us stress. We are using this content to cause us stress. We are using this content to gratify ourselves. And we are also causing a huge carbon footprint. 60% of internet traffic is because of such boredom, boredom-related uh, work that we do. Many people use it just to go to bed. Put it on, keep watching it till you sleep, and it's running. So we need to uh, really be mindful of how we are using uh, digital. This is the global CO2 emissions of our digital footprint. It's 3.7% of the global budget, of the global footprint that we have. That's equal to, comparable to the airline industry. So our carbon footprint, because of our digital activities, is comparable to the airline industry's footprint. We all associate footprint carbon with 
oil and gas, with flying, with uh, traveling, with cars, where our digital activities had such a big impact. And given the exponential growth that we are all going through and expecting in the coming years, this is going to become 14% of the total carbon emissions by 2040. That's a significant amount, more than 10%. And this, out of this, uh, today, out of this 3.7%, about 1% is attributed to artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? I mentioned every search that we do, every content that we consume is served by an artificial intelligence in the background. But uh, today, artificial intelligence is being used in the corporate world extensively to drive automation. All kind of supply chain automation work, uh, optimization work is happening using artificial intelligence. Uh, huge amount of predictions, you can predict various things. Who's going to be the next customer calling? What's his or her profile in a call center is being predicted. All kinds of predictions, automations, and optimizations are happening. In the last five to 10 years, the corporate world has embraced digitization and artificial intelligence in a big way. Uh, India, has, as a country, has uh, in a big way uh, embraced digitization with payments, as an example. But now, in the last few months, we have started to see a new form of AI. This is called generative AI. This is a step change from all the AI that we have seen in the past. This is going to impact all of us blue-collar workers, not just white-collar workers. Because it can content, it can create any kind of content. It'll write an email for you, it'll write a thesis for you, it'll write a white paper for you, it'll create images for you, it'll create video for you, it'll create software code for you. This is the new world of AI and we've started to witness it in the last few months. So what's so, so important about this? Why am I talking about this? All the images that you've seen today that I put together in this slide deck are generated by an AI. Um, each of these images has had its own carbon footprint. How much is that? <clears throat> How do we understand? The text that is generated by a chatbot, uh, the very famous chatbot that many of us have started experiencing, is I have done some research on this, and the amount of uh, carbon footprint is of the magnitude of half a billion tons of CO2 in just training that algorithm. Half a billion ton of CO2 is, has been consumed to train one algorithm which can write free text for you, any kind of text for you. Yeah? This is just one algorithm in the world. Of course, millions and millions of people are using it, but the big tech companies, all of them are in a big AI war. Everybody wants to build it now. Everybody's building. And text is just one part of it. There is video, there is music, there is audio, there is software code. We are on a rampant mode to automate everything at the expense of the planet. OK, finally, we're going to do a bit of an exercise, just a few minutes, to try and understand how our perspective affects the actions we take. Yeah? Many of us probably didn't know that AI and digital has such a big carbon footprint. Many of us didn't bother about it because we were not told. And even if we had read about it, we didn't know the magnitude of it. So now that we know what actions can we take, this is a small exercise to try and uh, appreciate the importance of perspective and how it might change our actions. So this exercise is called Thumbs Up. I'm going to ask you all to raise your hands up in the air with your thumbs up. Please make sure your hands are up in the air. Now I'd like you to please look up and revolve your hands in the clockwise direction, as if the clock is moving in the clockwise direction. Yeah? Then keep doing it. Keep bringing it down at the eye level. And then keep bringing it further down at the waist level. And now, is it moving clockwise? or anti-clockwise. I'm now moving anti-clockwise. I started clockwise. So the perspective changes depending on where you're looking it from. If you're on one side of the clock, it's clockwise. But if you're standing on the other side of the clock, it's anti-clockwise. So what some people see as correct, others see as incorrect. Um, so now that we understand the digital carbon footprint that we are all uh, contributing to, how can we change our actions? So I'd like to conclude by giving us some very simple 
suggestions that we can all take to try and uh, reduce our digital carbon footprint. We should stop mindless streaming and browsing, not just for our mental and psychological health, but also for the planet. We can avoid smartphone for one hour before sleeping. I've started doing this in the last few years. I just keep it away for one hour before I go to bed. I read a book, I just walk briskly if I'm not able to, uh, if I'm not able to overcome my addiction of being on the phone, but that really helps and I'm teaching this to my eight-year-old, my 15-year-old and my wife. All of us are trying to practice this. It's difficult, but it helps mentally, physically and for the planet. Avoid sending heavy email attachments at work and as well as in personal life, try and use shared folders. Use simple SMS messages as much as possible rather than using messaging apps. Messaging apps also have. And finally, be purposeful with your digital privilege. We all have a digital privilege. India is embracing digital in a big way, but it has a big cost to the planet and to our minds. So if we become purposeful with our digital privilege, it'll help the planet and all of us mentally. Thank you so much.